Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another review and today I'm taking a look at another high grade witch from Mercury release and this one right here of course is the Hindri Sturm, aka the actual down to business version of the Hindri we would have seen before. So if you want to see a review of that one, you can check that out before this one, it will be more detailed. And if you do want one of these of your own, this video right here would not have been possible without those awesome people over at Hobby Link Japan. Link is down there in the description. Now let's check it out. So when it comes to the build of this kit, this is 100%, well not 100%, but extremely, extremely close to what we saw with the standard version of the Hindry. The only real difference is here, of course, is the obvious one, which is the colors, and we have some new parts for using with this, which are mainly the weapons and equipment. So because there isn't a whole lot to say about that, let's jump right on into the aesthetics. I will also mention that this is pretty much the out-of-box build using the included stickers. There's not that many stickers in here. The build here is fantastic as you'd expect from a Witch from Mercury kit. And I did panel line this with the flow type panel liner. So here's a before of what it looked like before it was panel lined beside a after of what it was like after it was panel lined. Now let's get in for a closer look. So now jumping into the aesthetics, and like I mentioned already, this is, for the most part, a color swap of the Hindry. I'll do a comparison very soon, we've got some different parts on the chest, crotch and head as well, but for the most part it is just a color variant. Now I will mention I absolutely love the Hindry, it's really up there for me when it comes to the Witch from Mercury kits. It's so nicely designed, both visually and physically. The touch, the feel, everything about this is rock solid and nice to pose. When it comes to grassly suits, it's my second favorite after the Mikhailis. So we've got the usual grassly flare going on here that is a lot of colors in a kind of almost purple and white hue. We did have the standard Hydri which was in a green but there was a kind of purplish hue to the gray segments on it. We've got some clear parts at least in the face and the head camera stickers for using in the shoulders for the rest of those shiny parts and as for the stickers this is them not too many just on the shoulders the eyes and the lens segment of the beam rifle otherwise what we've got here is another absolutely phenomenal looking almost night looking suit with some silver paint or something similar like that you could make yourself another awesome night looking suit to go with some we've seen from iron-blooded orphans as well as the 30 minute missions line. This thing is pretty cool and kind of looks like an upgraded 30 minute missions. So jumping into some comparisons and first up there is it with the standard Hindry that came out about a couple of months ago. The color is the biggest difference here but when it comes to the head the Hindry Sturm has a new head with a slightly different eye sensor and a head camera up top in that kind of Gundam style kind of way. The torso is different between the two as well, the Hydri Sturm has these two circular parts up top which looks like they may be weapons or sensors, whereas what we've got on the Hydri in green here is something akin to a pretty cool looking cross in the chest. The crotch armor is a little bit different too, we've got a line down the standard Hydri, this one has three divots in it and looks a little bit more armored up, but besides that, physically identical. As for some size comparisons, there it is beside both high grade versions of the Ariel, Beside the high-grade Mikhailis, the high-grade Zoart Heavy, the high-grade Gundam Faract, and for some non-G Witch high grades, there it is beside the high-grade Exia, the high-grade Atlas Gundam, and the high-grade Gundam Rose. So now jumping into the accessories, and here's everything that comes with the high-grade Hydri Sturm. So for the most part what we get in here is the standard Gumpla loadout with a couple of extra bits. So what we get in here is the beam rifle, one beam saber, shield, and on top of that then we've got the backpack with the beam cannon as well as this waist unit. So when it comes to the hands in the Hydri right here we don't have anything extra at all, just your standard holding hands we've been seeing for quite some time. This of course will make it compatible with the rest of the HG which from Mercury kit so far and most HD kits so that is good. And speaking of compatibility we've got the standard backpack pair of peg holes as well. So now moving into the weapons and the first thing we have in here is the beam rifle. Jump into the manual now for the description it says like the Heingres portable firearm this model is fitted with a new longer barrel. Intended for use in actual combats its battery cartridge has three times the capacity of low capacity cartridges used in Astikasia School of Technology under school regulations. When it comes to the actual model kit this is a simple enough design. The only thing that actually happens here is the side to side moving handle. 
Besides that, we do have a sticker included for using with the sight segment right here. Attaching it is super simple. It attaches into the hand in the usual way, just pops in like so and holds in perfectly good. So I think it's about time to get the Hydri into the air, so I'm gonna use this stand right here. I get asked in every comment section what this is, so I'll mention it yet again. This is the greatest high grade stand around because, well, it's made by Good Smile Company. So this is the package right here. It's called the Simple Stand. You get three inside of a pack. This cost me 12 euro, which means four euro per stand. And these are absolutely phenomenal. There is some little holdy grab arms in here as well, which you won't necessarily need with these particular kits. And these are compatible with these absolutely awesome thingamajiggers. These are the simple stand build on type, which are little platforms. As you can see, they're being used here with some kind of nendoroids, and this is what you can do with them. So if you've got some black shelves like I do, you can literally use this to tear kits on so you can see them past each other. So if you don't have a lot of shelf space and you don't want them getting cluttered, you can just whip out one of these absolutely awesome bad boys like this. And you can also use the little stand majigger from those other simple stands with this if you want to have someone in flight up good and high. Now I've got absolutely nothing against Bandai's own action bases, even their action base six, which is kind of like this. But I find this is made out of a nicer, smoother plastic that's a little bit stronger. So in reviews, it just works for me to, you know, get something into the position I want it in front of the camera. It still wiggles if you move it a bit, but not as much. And it's much easier to move around and you don't have to build it. So it's super fast and super easy. I recommend it, highly recommend them. The next long range weapon we're going to be taking a look at is the backpack. What it says here about the backpack and beam cannon is, the backpack and various exterior components are updated versions of standard combat equipment used for the Heingra, its predecessor. The beam cannon is a new add-on designed to provide supportive firepower. So now taking a look at the backpack and the backpack itself is quite small. We've got some thrusters molded into it right there. There is the cannon segment, which is simple enough. I think it's only made out of two parts joined together. This does have the standard backpack adapter. We've got a bit for a beam saber right here, and this gives me a bit of a gym cannon kind of feel. We've got two points of articulation right here for this cannon, so that's at the top and at the bottom, so it's got a giggity 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 goo. And this attaches on in the standard backpack kind of way. Super simple, but very effective. The little bit of articulation we have here allows it to move out of the way entirely or up and over the shoulder, ready to fire. I will mention as someone who builds Warhammer as well as building Gompla, the fact that there is no hole in the end of the barrel is giving me real brain issues. Especially because what I'm seeing right there, that is most definitely a hole. But what we've actually got on the end of the weapon here is more of a kind of nubbin. But I suppose it's better than just a blunt old end. Next up is the beam saber, back to the manual, and what it says is, Close range weaponry mounted on the backpack. Though similar in form to the version carried by the Heingra, the convergence rate of the beam blade it generates has been improved. So the beam saber that we get in here is standard enough. Standard beam blade in the usual kind of roundy type, and the handle is just your usual simple single piece. Now I will mention, even though we only do have the one beam saber in here, because on the runner's beams come in twos, there is an extra leftover beam. Attaching the beam into the hand is the usual routine, it just pops on in like so- Whoa, that one can actually pass through. Ooh, burnt hand, burnt fingers! But yeah, otherwise it can just be popped into the hand just like so. So the usual simple routine right there. And of course when it's not in use you can just pull it out, pop off the beam, and the beam saber can be stored in here just like so. Very classic Gundam. The next piece of equipment we have is the shield. According to the instructions, the firearm built into the Heingra's shield has been removed to make the shield lighter. As with the Heindri, the articulated arm mount allows for it to be positioned in front of the hand as well. So as for the actual shield itself, it's very nicely designed. So we've got two shades of plastic. That's the very light gray, the purplish gray, or should I say just purple. Around on the other side, we've got a little arm with two points of articulation like we would have seen with the other Heindri. And we do have the rotation right there too. So like every grassly suit we've seen so far, this attaches onto that little hard point on the back of the wrist perfectly like this. So it can be on the back of the arm for defending like so, or once again, just like the standard hindry, this can swing forward seamlessly in front of the fist to guard just like that, or I assume for a nice punchy punchy shield punches. So the last thing that we've gotten here is this, and there's nothing mentioned about this in the manual whatsoever, so all I can, well, assume that it is, is some kind of flight unit 
or a thruster unit because that's what it looks like. So this is waist mounted, so it just pops on just like so into this peg hole and we've got two segments here which are attached via a ball joint. So those can move around like so, probably to propel it side to side in space or on land. We've got another thruster right there, which I assume works with the other thrusters around the unit. So finally, just taking a quick look at the articulation. This is rock solid. Like, I mean, it is so, so solid like these kits always are. And because we've already seen the Hindry in motion, I'm just going to uh, throw it into the pose and you can judge for yourself. So the articulation is great. The only problem I ever had with the Hindry is the ankles because they are a little bit on the unique side. But besides that, I'm apologizing about why this kept falling apart and falling over because my dog got way too distracting. He was sniffing around the ground and that only means bad things. So anyway, that right there is it for the review. And just like we would have seen with the high grade Hindry, I give this platinum tier. This is a ridiculously almost perfect grunt kit. It does everything you'd need and more. It looks fantastic. It comes with some nice accessories and it can definitely pose up a storm besides those somewhat awkward ankles, but those are lower accurate. So you cannot complain too much. I highly recommend it. These are fantastic kits. And if you haven't tried one out, this is some of the best grunt mecha you can get today. Anyway, link in the description. I got mine through Hobby Link Japan. As always, thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more Gunpla reviews, and I'll see you next time. Once again, this video right here, and none of these videos would be possible without each and every single one of you guys who watches my videos. And special thanks to those of you who are supporting me over on Patreon and here on the channel memberships, including 10 Soldier YT, Caleb Engelhart, Dashil Marmion, Go Little Rockstar, Joe, Lawrence Seahack, Orgy59061, and Van Fawn.